So my name is Mani Duraisamy. I'm the co-founder and CTO of a company called Orange Cave. Now, I'll give a little bit of background about myself before I jump into my topic. I joined Selectica, a Valley-based company, in the year 2000. Uh, you know, Silicon Valley is full of all hype and money, right? So when I went there in the year 2000, in, in the in the month of May. Selectica sent me a limousine. <laughs> limousine is a car that is sent for actors and president, presidents, right? So I was sent a limousine to pick, up, pick me up at airport. That's the amount of cash Selectica had at that time after its IPO. It had a billion dollars of cash. But just in two months, I saw the fortune change, the dot-com burst, and then the company pretty much went almost bankrupt. So when I came back from US to India, the whole company looked like a graveyard. Now, from then on, I found that the computing industry revived itself and then turned around. And today, it stands as a completely new different industry. That insight is what I want to share with you today. So let me give an example of how this presentation is going to look like. How many of you have an Android phone like a smartphone, a lot of you, right? How many of you had three years back a kind of ordinary phone? Some of you, the same set of you? Yeah, looks like it. Now, have you ever thought what was a company like Google, a software product company, a search company doing in the telephony space, especially in the cell phone space? What is a computer company doing in telephony? Or if you think about another example, how many of you have heard about Google's driverless car? Some of you. Google is experimenting. In fact, it has already gotten a license to run driverless car in California. Now, have you ever thought what was autom automobile industry doing till a software company came and conquered this space. There is another company called Airbnb. Have you ever heard of it? Airbnb is a company which allows you to rent your extra space to people who want to stay. Because all of us know hotels are extremely expensive, right? So if let's say, for example, you go to Chennai, and if I have a room for free, and if I can rent it for, let's say, two per day, you can probably save 2,000 rupees per day, right? It's both profitable for you and me. Now, Airbnb is threatening the entire hotel business. There is another company called Uber, which is disrupting the car rental space. So you can rent your car if you're in town instead of renting a cab. Think about it. So is threatening the other industries in the world. If the industry does not innovate, software industry will eat it for its breakfast. That's the kind of change that we are seeing in software. I'll give you a, uh, another example which happened two days before. BSNL Chief and Kapil Sibyl two days back declared that Skype and Google Hangouts are illegal in India. Can you think about it? How can you ever make a communication device in internet illegal because internet is all about communication. Now this is how an industry like telephone which have not invented itself will feel when a new kind of disruptive technology comes and threatens itself, right? It's what in dark night we say, this is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. You have a collision course, right? The software industry is going and taking over the other industry. What is happening in software industry itself? Let's try and break this a little bit and understand how he, we have achieved this part. I'd like to turn that concept into what I call it as rise of the one trick pony. What's a pony? Have you ever heard of a pony? A pony is a horse, right? It's, it's typically used in circuses to, you know, do some tricks and usually a pony is uh, mentioned in a very disparaging way. It's mentioned in a very 
uh, good way it's to just say that ponies can do only one type of job it is not uh, you know capable of doing multiple jobs at the same time now to explain that concept let me go back to the history of where i was in 2000 where dot com crash happened at that time the company that i worked for selectica was in a space called online selling system suppose you want to buy a laptop today you order it on uh, ebay.com amazon whatever website you want right now that's typically used for buying ready made laptops or ready made computers but let's say for example you want to buy an advanced server in your company it's usually not a very simple click and buy decision you have to configure like for example you can say i want this much amount of memory four cpus plus so many data cards and so on when you when you start configuring like that not all configuration possible in the same server like for example if you choose 16 gb of memory you have to have eight cpu of processing power so to do those kind of complex configuration selectica was used at that time so selectica was very famous uh, in dot com companies which used to sell complex products on the internet so when dot com crash happened oracle and sap took over that market why not because they have a they had a better product than selectica but because they had a whole product they had erp and they had crm and they had hrms and then they had configurator the online selling system so at that time when dot com crashed oracle was able to sell the entire suite for lesser cost so cost mattered when it came to cash crunch and selectica lost all the market because it just focused on one technology which is called best of breed just doing online configuration or online selling system better, right so at that time we lost the market fast forward 4 years later 2004 there was this company which stunned the entire world the company name is called google compare it against yahoo's traditional wisdom of the same thing yahoo did multiple things it did search it did mail it did home pages it did directory service it did pretty much everything that one would call it as the home of internet right but yet unlike oracle versus selectica yahoo failed because of the same strategic mistake what was that the mistake was that 4 years earlier softwares were sold like how cars were sold in traditional business that is not how software is being sold think about this for a second if let's say for example a new company bins has to enter indian market can they compete with maruti there is a possibility let's say for example volkswagen comes into indian market can they compete with maruti it's hard the reason is maruti already had a strong distribution presence every street you go whether it is salem chennai bangalore you find a maruti dealer that distribution network is important if you have to a physical product but what happens to a software product you don't need distribution network that's rule number 1 when you don't have distribution network the strategy of the game changes which is anybody across the world can create the best product in the world and you don't have to worry about entrenched players who has distribution network across the world because it does not matter that is why mark zuckerberg at the age of 19 could create a 100 billion dollar company which we could never imagine in the world and he could create and he could go to an ipo within 4 years and make it to the fourth hundred list of richest men right this is because of the single distribution economy that internet brings in right fast forward to 2008 that caught up to the enterprise companies as well for example if you had uh, your daily uh, routines like for example buying cell phones 
or for example buying gifts on a valentines day i mean it was yesterday obviously uh was to be done on ebay you are acting like a consumer to a business right that is one kind of business the other kind of business is when a company like ours which is orenscape wants to buy servers in dell or in hp right that's called business to business uh consumer or uh, sorry business to business relationship so if you think about those kind of applications you can think about applications like salesforce or oracle this trend moved from google to the enterprises as well so in 2008 you saw oracle was buying companies like siebel on the crm space and yet salesforce how many of you know salesforce here some of you okay salesforce was another small company which conquered the internet on the enterprise space as well very similar to how google did for amazon now there was an other concept that came in at that time which is cloud compute on one hand internet transformed the distribution economy it reached its end consumers cloud transformed how you get raw materials now for example you think about how cars have to procure raw materials from its suppliers you have to have a supplier base a cluster of supplier base for example if you come to chennai there is varagadam and sri perambudur or if you if you were on the on the road you would see lot of industries there right the reason why that happens is hyundai has to source its raw materials from the nearby clusters right a raw material needs both transportation cost as well as you need to source them because every raw material that is produced has some cost there are two cost involved one is the distribution cost which is you are transporting the other one is if you take a raw material and then produce another one there is a minimum raw material cost that's happening in internet what happens let's say for example you have a song and you want to create another copy of that song what is the cost involved in creating another song zero right if you think about it it's pretty powerful right unlike any industry software products can be created and then replicated with zero cost it means you can potentially create one model of maruti car and replicate into as many number of products without spending any money right that's again a very powerful notion that is why selling software is no longer similar to how trade businesses were selling physical products either it's of how it distributes its goods to its consumers or how it acquires its raw materials from suppliers right and that changed the industry as to what it is in 2012 so in 2012 have you heard of this company called instagram anybody yes instagram was sold for whooping 1 billion dollars without a single dollar of revenue right with a total of 14 employees you know what that means each employee had roughly 100 million dollars of money right which is equivalent to 5000 crores of money that's what they did in just one year now how did that happen because if you think about the shift from cloud to mobile it's again a paradigm shift the the problem with web based browsers is that you can stuff all the functionalities into one frame facebook has post it has friends network it has chat it has everything but when mobile became a primary communication medium you can't do all of them in one single application so the application started fragmenting so instead of having just one facebook for doing message for doing chat just for messaging you had twitter for posting photos you had instagram so instead of being the single window of having multi functionalities you had multiple applications doing specialized job that is what the rise of one trick pony means it means that because of the underlying principles of how web has distributed application it has made the cost to zero anybody can create application and distribute 
And number two, the application need not be big. It can be small. It can be one click pony. This is a powerful lesson that you all have to remember because when you go out in the industry three years from now, this will play a larger role because software is eating into other markets. Thank you.